gentlemen and uh, ladies. So today I have with me a very interesting guest that, you know, did me the honor to come by and his name is Jack uh, Cruz. How are you, Jack? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm just fine. So we started talking, of course, like I always do with my guests and uh, you had a lot of interesting things to say and I was a little bit hypnotized by your uh, lecture because that, it was a lecture basically and I thank you for that. So. But at some point you said something about El Salvador and tell me about it. Tell us about El Salvador and why do you want to stay there? What, you know, what is the, why, why is this place so special in a way? Well, most people know when you follow me on social media that I teach people about quantum biology, about how you optimize health. And when you really think about optimizing health, it comes down to the most valuable asset that everybody in the world has. You may not agree, but I will convince you very quickly that the most valuable asset that we have is time. If you don't have time, you don't have anything. Then when you understand time very well, the next thing you become to realize is that you gain time by having health. So health is the way for you to buy time. That means that you have to understand the physics of organisms, the physics of cells. And it turns out the three-legged stool that controls everything about maximizing time always links back or distills to three things, light, water, and magnetism. So most people think they understand light, water, magnetism well until they sit down with a guy like me or listen to some of my podcasts and they begin to realize there's a lot more nuance, there's a lot more complexity that are there. So the flip side of the argument is most people are unaware, and I would say probably in Europe more than the United States, that health and wealth are fundamentally linked. It's becoming all too obvious, especially in the United States, uh, where basically our system of government has broken down where the government is being now stealing freedoms and time from us. And when that begins to happen, you have to begin to become introspective and look to see how health and wealth are linked. So in the United States, it's pretty simple. Um, our system of medical care is around sick care. So the number one cause of bankruptcy in the United States is very different than it is in Europe. It's actually medical bankruptcy. So to make this case for people in the United States, it's easy. And when you live uh, in a country that's extremely comfortable, and the reason we're comfortable is we won two world wars, the major benefit that we got from both the first world war and the second world war was this, is that our currency is the reserve currency of the world. Uh, no matter what you want to buy, most of the settlement happens in dollars. It's a big deal. In the 1970s, we made a deal with Americo who controls most of the petrol dollars in the world. Anytime petrol dollars are exchanged, it also has to be in dollars. So the United States has had a stranglehold. What happened in 1971? 1971, people in Europe began to send their boats to the Federal Reserve Bank in New York to reclaim their gold that the United States held to protect it from the Nazis. And then President Nixon at the time decided to close the gold window, meaning you couldn't do it. This was an effective, if you understand economics really well, this was an effective default on the people of the United States. In other words, this is when, we, when stealing became legalized. Why? Because the dollar was allowed to free float. It was no longer based on gold. And you know the history of being Greek. You know the history of the Roman Empire. Money needs to be backed by something of value. And value has to transcend space and time. Turns out in the United States since 1971, the dollar is backed by nothing. Even though our money says it's in God we trust, turns out it's the industrial military complex we trust because that is the only thing that backs the power of the US dollar. So when you begin to realize this, that the contract that was present in our founding documents has been broken, we're no longer a constitutional republic, now we're, we're ruled by a den of criminals and they do things to steal value from us through this legalized counterfeiting, which is money printing. So what happens now in the United States compared to say Greece, if you need a knee replacement, 
to get a knee replacement in the United States, it costs anywhere between thirty and fifty thousand dollars. Most recently, because the money printer is on, uh, the cost of knee replacement has gone up. So you have to realize then, if you lead, lead an unhealthy life and you like American culture, and you stay up all night watching Netflix, eating McDonald's, Pizza Hut, Coca Cola, you're going to need a knee replacement maybe when you're fifty years old. And from the time you're 30 to 50, you're probably going to be taking a lot of big pharma solutions that really are not designed to fix you. It's designed to make you a slave to the customer to take the prescription the doctor gives you. So now you are 55 years old. You have to have this knee replacement. You worked your whole life in the factory. Uh, and basically, your life savings has been stolen from you over that whole time, a little bit at a time, because the value of the dollar has gone down, down, down. So here you are now sick unhealthy and broke, but you've been promised through your documents that you learned in third grade that everything is great. We're the greatest country in the world. Turns out there's a lot of people in America, the boomers, my generation, who are beginning to wake up to realize that the contract that the government made with us 250 years ago has been slowly usurped from us since World War II. See, people in Europe have probably got the message about the bad side of America, but there's a lot of people in Europe that think even now that the United States is better than every other place. And I'll, gi I'll give you this. I will give you this. The United States still is better than every other place. But here's the problem. When you have the American perspective that I just gave you, remember, we came from the top. We're now falling down. And we're getting closer to where continental Europe has lived for the last 50 years. Uh, and this doesn't sit too well with people who are, how shall I say, comfortable and happy. People in the United States right now are disaffected. Most of you in Europe saw this in the 2016 election when we went uh, a completely different way than we have ever went. At the end of the reign of Trump, uh, the country was completely divided. There was people who loved them and people that hated them. And most of the people in Europe, you were probably swayed against Trump because the mainstream media is owned by six corporations. The corporations showed you, they gave you the perspective, they painted the picture in front of your eye so that you could see what you wanted to see. Here we are now in 2021, and all the, the tyrannies that have been worn from our founding fathers are now upon our shores. The number one tyranny that we're dealing with right now is... <laughs> and what I call viral tyranny or medical tyranny. But what you need to understand is this is a shell game for something bigger. What is it? Google is a compliance test for an economic reset. Why? Something that we talked about before we came on is that the last end of the debt cycle that your country and my country all went through was called World War II. Generally, when you get to the end of the debt cycle, when things are really bad, it usually ends with revolution or war, okay? Turns out the last big financial crisis that we had that Greece also experienced with us was in 2008 when Lehman Brothers went belly up in the United States and that shocked everybody. And um, world banks were really brought to their knees in 2008. If it wasn't for the United States taxpayer bailing out the failing banks, the world likely would have been pushed into a global depression because we are the dominant reserve currency. Now, here we are in 2021. All we did with those policies under Obama is kick the can down the road further. And now, with their friends at the World Economic Forum and the WHO, they've come up with another plan, another out card that doesn't tie to a world war. It's not tied to a revolution. They believe that they can perform an economic reset where everybody, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy about. It turns out this cryptographer, right after 2008, named Satoshi Nakamoto, came up with an idea. He goes, could I make a computer code that takes the best things in money, both as a peer-to-peer -peer transfer, as a unit of account, as a store of value, put it in code, and create it? This was an idea that was so radical, uh, but he had 5,000 years of human history to look at what the problems and the good things were about a hard source of money. Um, 
And he created that in the code of Bitcoin. Then he did something even more revolutionary. It's almost as revolutionary as, you know, a doctor coming up with the polio vaccine and giving it to the world for free and never patenting it. Satoshi Nakamoto, which is not his real name, obviously, gave Bitcoin to the world. And when it first started, it traded pennies on the dollar. Everybody thought it was kind of internet play money. Nobody realized truly that this had clinical utility. Slowly now, over the last 12 years, no matter what country you're in, and this is important for you to hear, Bitcoin is the best performing asset on planet Earth in every single stock market. This is something that every central bank hates. I want you to think about that. Something every central bank hates, but yet is the best performing asset. Why is that? Because it's the first thing in human history that a central banker can't control. So it's hard money for the people. So what does that mean? It means that it gives you time and freedom back. Oh, so now we're back to the biology story. See, living as a black swan mitochondriac, when you optimize light, water, and magnetism, you also get time and freedom back. So remember, my friend, when you create time for people and freedom, that means they need money to live and thrive. Like all the things the Greeks and the Renaissance are known for, you know, in Europe, is when human potential began to meet itself. The statues that were made, the literary arts, the things that we've come to enjoy about civilization, those things are preserved in your money, your wealth. And they should be able to transcend time and space. You should be able to share that with your people and subsequent generations. It should not have to be protected from bankers who try to steal it from you over time. And when you begin to understand this, because I think everybody who listens to this podcast will really understand how health and wealth are linked in a very new way. If you live in Europe right now, you've been in lockdown for 18 months. Now, I'm more fortunate. I live in a, a state in the United States in Florida where my governor tells my current president, fuck you. And this is a benefit, but guess what? If you live in California, you live in New York, you live in Illinois, where the governor is much more progressive, liberal, and communist, and supports locking people down to save you from a virus, um, then you begin to see that you've lost time, you've lost 18 months out of your life, and you lost a lot of freedom. And see, when the government anywhere in the world begins to realize that if they create an emergency that they can steal more power from the taxpayer, guess what the government's going to do all the time? They're going to create more emergencies. That exactly was what the plan for the World Economic Forum was that started in Davos with Klaus Schwab and Henry Kissinger. Who Kissinger was the Secretary of State for Nixon. It's kind of ironic. This all happened right around 1971, 1973. So the plan for 50 years has been to slowly destroy the best country in the world. Why? Because if you can destroy the best country in the world, then you teach everybody else in the world the lesson that you need to follow our rule. Ultimately, what's the game plan? The game plan is to go back to an imperialist monarchy where certain families all over the world can control us through surveillance capitalism. That's what a central bank digital coin is. So when people are in Greece who listen to this podcast, begin to understand why is the central bank digital coin that you're going to hear about, both in Europe, the United States, China, a real problem? Because it's now a time where money can be used to find out what Dean and Jack are doing in their respective country in the zip code they live in. See, when we use fiat money, they didn't know what we're doing. And they don't like that. Ever since we were all warned, the world was warned by a guy who's now enemy number one in the United States. His name is Mr. Snowden. Snowden told the world that we're now spying not only on you, but we're spying in the people inside the United States. This has been going on for a long time, since the NSA uh, got the power through the Patriot Act when the uh, Twin Towers were taken down. In other words, an emergency created another time that the government could make a law in 45 days to begin the process of slowly destroying the foundation 
of the founding fathers documents. 2008-2009, Satoshi Nakamoto came up with a different idea. He goes, can I make something where people who realize what's really in my white paper begins to realize in computer code form, this is the American Constitution and the Bill of Rights. In other words, when American Airlines tells you that you have to have a vaccine to fly to El Salvador, you can tell them to go fuck yourself because you have enough money to go in on your own plane and fly to El Salvador yourself. That possibility exists right now for people who understand the power of Bitcoin. They understand that it gives you time and freedom to do the things you want to do. That's the ultimate form of democracy. Why? Because it builds self-sovereignty. Your sovereignty doesn't have to come from your government. Throughout human history, everybody has believed that sovereignty has to come through a monarch or a government system. That is no longer true. And this is manifested in a small little country in Central America where their president, who was formerly communist, got the idea. He's a very wealthy guy from a very wealthy family. And he saw for the first 35 years of his life that communism didn't solve the problems of anybody, the poor, the middle class, or the elite. In fact, it made things much worse. So he decided to try to do something different. And because of his unique perspective, him being Middle Eastern family, but Spanish, and where he grew up and saw the problems in Central America, his country went through a massive civil war uh, 20 years ago, and they couldn't control their own currency. And I know Greeks appreciate this because you went through the same thing with the European Union. And what they decided to do at that time is to adopt the American dollar as their currency in 2001. Their country has been relatively stable, but the problem is anytime you're subject to another person's currency, you basically become their slave. And the problem was the, the uh, president, when he got in power two and a half years ago, he made the comment that I made to you earlier, because it's a very powerful comment. He said in 2001, we adopted the American dollar to help the banks to stabilize our civilization here because of the civil war that we brought upon ourselves. Now in 2021, I'm gonna change the rules and I'm gonna turn our currency over to Bitcoin that has no central controller, no central bank. In fact, on September 7th, when Bitcoin was made legal tender, and I don't know if you know this, but you need to follow Naib Bukele, who's the president in El Salvador, and you know what he did? He told the central bank, put his hands up to the IMF. You tell me the last time any European power has ever done that, but a small Central American country with eight and a half million people who, by everybody's standards in Europe and the United States, is probably a fourth world country. I'm telling you that in 10 years, their standard of living is gonna be better than what it is in Greece right now, and it's gonna be better than what it is in the United States. And you know what? When, you, when I say this to you on this podcast, most people are gonna think that's hyperbole. You know why? Because they don't understand the power of time, they don't understand the power of freedom. And I'm old enough to know that the Americans that laid their lives down in World War I and World War II for freedom, they did something for value. Current American version of the army, which we just got finished seeing in Afghanistan, that was for the benefit of the, the tyrants that have been ruling this country for the last 50 years. That wasn't done for the benefit of the taxpayer. In fact, it, it bent the taxpayer over a barrel to screw them. And the thing is, it took people's time away. So now when a boomer in the United States needs a knee replacement or needs to learn how to eat healthy, they can't do that. They can't go to a nutritionist in the United States and get a straight answer because the FDA and the big food companies here in the United States have usurped the power to tell people the truth. Instead, they would rather you eat factory laden food manufactured in a corporation but not grown by photosynthesis. And it turns out when you make a decision like that, over 50 or 60 years, you wind up needing a knee replacement. And it turns out that knee replacement is really expensive and you may not be able to do it and you become unproductive 
when you become unproductive part of the system, magically, in 2021, the government is coming to save your life with this new vaccine. That turns out, it actually can end your life. And maybe you start to realize that possibly, maybe this is part of the plan. Maybe this is how they're gonna solve some of their problems. And we're beginning collectively in the globe, you in Europe, you in Greece, me in, in Florida, me in El Salvador, are beginning to start to see how these things are fundamentally linked. Most people don't sit down long, long enough to understand how health and wealth really are linked. And when you begin to realize when you're a black swan mitochondriac, you become self-sovereign for your biology. When you own Bitcoin, you become self-sovereign for your economic power. When you marry those two, which is what and the reason why I decided to go to El Salvador, because most people don't know, El Salvador sits at 13.47 north latitude. It's inside the tropics, Capricorn and Cancer. Never will you face a winter. And not only that, uh, you know, I know where Greece is. It sits in the Mediterranean, but people don't realize that the Mediterranean northern border is 33 north latitude. Right. And Greece sticks out in it with the archipelago. It's good, but it ain't as good as El Salvador. And the other thing that's interesting, Greece and El Salvador have this in common, volcanic origins. Volcanic origins means there is magnetic flux. Magnetic flux means liquid metal flows in lava. We know there's enough stories about Greece and volcanoes blowing up uh, and things like that throughout Mediterranean history. So we know that's the reason why Greece also is a good place to be. And it's surrounded by the sea that provides seafood. Seafood provides a lot of electrons. And we know from Einstein's work that electrons are powered by light through the photoelectric effect. And it turns out, if you believe any religious text, I don't care if it's the Egyptians or modern Christianity, when you open up the paper, the Egyptians used to have God of Ra, God of the sun. You open up the book of Genesis, what does it say? Let there be light. The story is always around light. Now, the interesting part with religion, they never tell you the recipe. Your job, if you choose to accept it, is to figure out the recipe in your life, how it works. And what I'm telling you right now, our job is becoming harder because of our governments, because they're trying to lock us down to keep us out of the sun. And they want us to believe instead of having cell mediated immunity through our own T cells and B cells, that we should rely on Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca. That's not freedom, my friend. It's also not time. It also doesn't make any sense. And when you begin to realize that just because the world was good in the United States since World War II, it doesn't mean the future is promised to those people, especially when they start to make mistakes. And when they start to make mistakes to hurt the people whose ancestors bled for the freedom in this country, it's your turn to make a decision. See, choices are the hinges of destiny. You decide what you're gonna do. And when you see tyranny around you, as an individual, you have to make a decision. I'm going to tell you the major decision, become a black swan mitochondriac, optimize light, water, and magnetism, and then do the same thing with your money. And then maybe you'll look at the surroundings and say, maybe Florida at the 28th latitude isn't my best choice anymore. Maybe my best choice is to go someplace where everybody thinks it's been run down for 150 years, but maybe something new, a seed, just got planted in the volcanic soil that may change everything in the next 50 or 100 years. Maybe then time and freedom can once again come back into your life, just like at sunrise, the sun comes back through your eyes and skin and does something magical for you. I would uh, say, God damn, but that would be a curse. Uh, wow. So <laughs> I have so many questions for you, Jack. First of all, 
Do you know about the how the theory about the sun? Uh, there's a theory out there that we are approaching a phenomena called the ice. Not not ice age, mini ice age, but uh, exactly. Uh, what do you know about the new minima that supposedly is coming up and we are there? So and also before you answer this question. How do you think this is going to play with your decision or with anybody's decision to move to another country? So well, how is it going to be, you know, as El Salvador affected or not? It won't be affected. And this is important. And believe it or not, there's some European history that will teach you this lesson. First of all, what the modern minimum is, it's when the sun goes through many cycles. Everybody knows about the 11 year cycle, but there's a lot of other cycles the sun goes through. And it turns out Every so often, usually uh, on thousands of years or hundreds of years, that the sun gets very quiet. When it gets quiet, what's the phenotype that we look for? When we look at the sun, it has very few sunspots. When there's few sunspots, uh, it means that the temperature of the quantum yield of sunlight to the planet is lower. Okay? That means it's just like a car. If the battery wasn't as strong, the car may start, it may work but the power windows and the antenna may not come on. So it means to be on the planet inside the tropics is the best place to be. Why? Because the sun never varies in that time. So in other words, it will always be stronger inside the 20s, which is the Tropic of Capricorn and Cancer. So you know, even though Greece right now is well situated, it's not as good as where El Salvador is. So on a relative basis, do I still think you'll be fine in Greece? Yes, it's low enough latitude where you're okay. But the point I would like, make to, like to make to you to show you another part of the biology story, the last modern minimum that we had occurred in the mid portion of the 1800s. Most people in Europe are very, very aware uh, of the history of music. One of the things that civilization came up with that is uh, very, very powerful that I think all cultures, no matter what they are, whether they're crazy or not, people love music. Well, there's a violin, very famous violin. It's called the Stradivarius. Stradivarius was the person who made these um, violins, and they are noticed to have the best sounds in the world. Do you know why the Stradivarius has the best sound? Because it came from the wood of the forest in northern Europe during the last Mondra Minimum, and it turns out the density was thicker of that wood because the power of the sun dropped. Okay? So I don't want you to think that there's not benefits to – a lowered quantum yield. There is, when it turns out, you're planted in the ground in the magnetic field out in the sun when you're a plant. But remember, the type of life form we are, we're designed not to be planted in the ground. We walk across the tectonic plates. In fact, we breathe the exhaust fumes of that tree. So you're better off to be in a different place at that time when you're going through stress. And it just happens to be that El Salvador has adopted Bitcoin and it's inside the tropics. So what I tell you right now, am I recalibrating my top 10 countries for the next 50 to 100 years for units? I think you can figure out that story is true. Like I would tell you that your country, as far as I'm concerned on the biology side, is probably better than any other country in Europe. The problem is the economic part of your story is very very bad. So how, how could you, my advice to you as a Greek guy, stop being a skeptic when it comes to Bitcoin and start buying a lot of it. Why? Because you're already in a good place. I mean, you can come and visit anytime you want in El Salvador, but I think it's far better choice for you right now is to probably build your stash in Bitcoin so that someday you won't be subject to the things the EU or the Greek government or the World Economic Forum, or the World Bank, or the WHO tries to impose upon you and your family, because then you'll be able to pick up and, and fly across the tectonic place to a place where you gain even more freedom. And it turns out the Bitcoin stash that you have in Greece on a relative basis, here's where Einstein's relativity comes in, on a relative basis will be worth much more in the third world than it will be in the first world of Europe. To live in Greece right now or to live in Florida right now costs a lot of money. Do you know what the average person in El Salvador makes today? 400 U.S. a month. If you made 400 U.S. a month in Florida, 
you would be living in a refrigerator box on the street because of the price of things. Even in Greece, that's not as good as, you know, Florida. You could live like a king in El Salvador if you're a Greek person that just, say, had five to ten Bitcoin. And the problem is, I know there's plenty of people over there in Greece that have money, but as you said, there's so much distrust about money and about politics because of the history of Greece and what you guys just went through. And here's the funny thing. When you truly understand Bitcoin, it's not about the government. It's not about central banks. You're actually shorting central banks and governments by buying it. So when you understand that, that's when you go, now this is interesting. This, this is something that's going to give me something back that no government, my mom and dad, my sisters, my brothers, nobody can give this to me. But I, I am able to take all the time that I spent doing hard work, put it in this coin, and it's going to grow. I, I tell people, the day COVID hit the United States when things got bad was uh, March 13th, 2020. That day, you could have bought Bitcoin for $3,000 one coin. Today, Bitcoin, 18 months later, $50,000 a coin. Wow, American money, in the last two years, we printed in 2020 30%. So that means 30% reduction in the dollar. So far this year, to date, 27%. So in two years, the American dollar buys 57% less than it did, and Bitcoin gives you 10 times more. You tell me what buys you more freedom and time. See, until you know the relative basis, meaning that's what the theory of relativity really says. What did Einstein say? Einstein said everything is relative, including time. That's the big difference between Newton. Newton's world was time was absolute and fixed. Einstein came in in 1905 and said, nothing's fixed, nothing is absolute, not even time. And when you understand that, what I'm trying to tell you, in Satoshi Nakamoto's algorithm, the code, Einstein's relativity is built in. And when you begin to understand this, then you understand, this is why Jack is saying, if I take my Greek money or my, uh, my euros and put it into Bitcoin, it's a better vehicle for me to travel all over the planet. All I need to do is when I travel the planet, find a place that's even cheaper to live than Greece that provides the things that Greece provides me on the biologic side, like good seafood, good olive oil, you know, good sun, good people, you know, kinship, things like that. Those are the things that, that are the basis of biology. What I'm telling you right now, just as you're finding out, you would have never thought probably prior to talking to me that those things may be beginning in a new cradle of humanity in a volcanic land just like your own at the 13th latitude. Very interesting. So <laughs> you may see many Europeans now coming and <laughs> to El Salvador because of your words. So maybe that's so good. There's, maybe. There, there, there's, a, there's a big European right now really? in El Salvador. Yeah, his name is Peter McCormick. He has uh, probably the most famous uh, Bitcoin podcast. And guess where he is right now? Where? He's actually in El Salvador. All right. Sitting down, and what, what he just made a tweet today is, I may have to buy a place here. I'm starting to realize the benefit. Why? Because oh. the UK is becoming a huge problem, and that's really high latitude. It's not a oh, good place oh, yeah. to be. True. And he really, he's beginning to realize it, but not... He doesn't put any of the biologic story together, but he puts the financial story together very well because that's what his podcast is based on. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you, Bitcoin isn't a big event yet in Europe, but it needs to be. Why? You guys need it more than we do in the United States. And I keep trying to tell people the most important people uh, are the poor people of the world. The poor people of the world are going to be able to front run millionaires. In other words... The World Economic Forum right now wants to do a rug pull to steal more money from taxpayers all over the world. That's what they did to Greece. Bitcoin reverses the process where you do the rug pull on the IMF and the World Bank and the World Economic Forum. When you understand that and you're Greek, 
all of you should be running to, to go get a wallet and start transferring your fiat money to Bitcoin. And I don't, I don't care if you get a little bit, because remember what I told you, 18 months ago, it was 3,000. Now it's 50. And you're going to say to me, Jack, this is a good deal now at 50 than it was at three. I'm going to tell you, Fidelity, which is one of the big uh, banks here in the United States, at least Bitcoin is going to be $1 million a coin by the time Biden gets out of office. So you ask yourself, would you like to be part of a 20x move over the next three to four years of your young life? Do you not think that that could be the kind of wealth that would buy you economic freedom to say, you know what, I'm going to go somewhere else to build my stash up. And when I'm 45 or 50, I'm going to come back to Greece and buy a palace that I could never buy if I stayed here. Why? Because on a relative basis, it makes more sense to go live somewhere that's better to build your stash and then come back and then do the things that the monarchs and kings used to do to everybody else. Therein lies the difference. In other words, it's a different way to gain theory out your life. All the while when you're doing this, remember that you've actually taken a step forward for your health. Why? It's likely better to live in a place like El Salvador because they have no pesticides. Their cows eat in the jungle. All the meat is beautiful. Everything there is green. The vegetable people come on the truck and call out, would you like to buy? This doesn't happen in the United States anymore. I know it doesn't happen that much in Europe anymore. Everything is factory farm. Everything is factory grown. Europe does a better job than the United States, but guess what? Everything in El Salvador, I, I made a joke when I was there, if you pee, a coconut tree grows. That's how fertile the land is because of the volcano. And I know you know that. That's why uh, Greeks have good wine and good olive oil. It's the same situation being on a volcanic archipelago. Um, and when you understand the biology and, and the well side, then you begin to start to think about this differently. Because I really do believe that podcasts like yours and getting this idea out that these two things are interwoven, they're meshed, people will be much more effective for their health and their wealth once they understand both of these parts. Honestly, that, that, that was a great realization for me too. So I'm not going to lie to you that uh, I wasn't expecting this kind of connection in my mind from your words because what you do, what you did right here is that instead of speaking uh, directly about, you know, sleep and food and stuff, you took a, a relative, you know, it took a deep dive into the basic fundamentals about health before we dive into more specifics and blah and blah. And that's what I like. Uh, personally, as a person, that's why I, I'm very aligned with your vision and your ideas. I, I'm, I very much like the, the big picture. So first address the big picture and then we can really go into more detailed stuff. And that's why I try to find people like you, really. Uh, people that are, let's say, in the fringes of society, that, that are not not massively accepted by many because what you say, I think, it's not easily digested by most people. It's even for me, which I, I'm, I'm now in a position that I can understand and even research about it. Even for me, it's novel. And I'm open-minded, very open-minded. And, and I like researching. It's my passion, basically. I'm, I'm very good at that uh, processing. But most people, you know, the common folk... And that's where I want your opinion, by the way. Uh, do you think that these kind of philosophies can be digested by the public? And if if no, how can we really start talking to people? Because I've I've seen before you answer, I've seen the same problem. I've had the you know I've I've been in a family. Uh, I've dated a girl that her father was uh, you know a famous economist, and he's very smart. He's very you know analytical. He knows the big picture. He knows history. He knows everything. But mo most people cannot really um, get in sync with his, teach his teachings mm -hmm. uh, and they want simple things. So what you would tell people in very simple terms what they should do in the next few years? Anybody who listens to me, if you think what I tell you is fringe, then basically what you said, how crazy is your life that you can't embrace nature? 
Because what am I teaching people fundamentally? That when you embrace nature, light, water, magnetism, that's all about quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is the only part of science that explains everything. And if you don't think that this is fundamental, I understand why you believe that. Why? Because all of us have been educated to believe that somehow a manufactured solution is better than nature. And it turns out you just live your life and look to your left and look to your right. The most amazing thing is a tree. A tree is made out of thin air. When you actually think about it, you go, there's no way. It's just made out of thin air. And then you learn about photosynthesis. And you learn about how CO2, water, and sunlight create cellulose and wood. And something made out of thin air can actually hit you in the head and kill you. Or it can bring you life. And then you realize that, that tree also makes oxygen. And oxygen is the terminal electron acceptor in your mitochondria. In other words, these two systems are built by nature to be a positive and negative feedback loop. They work perfectly together. The problem is when you do things in your life because of this quantum computer that break the laws of nature, then you get a problem. See, I don't have to teach hippos and lions quantum mechanics. Why? They do as they're supposed to do. Their quantum computers aren't good enough to break too many of nature's laws. But you, my friend, and the people who are listening to this, you do it every day. You're doing it right now. You're inside. Things on your ears. Talking to me over Skype. Most people who watch this think, yeah, but we're getting a huge benefit out of this by listening to you guys talk to each other. That's true. This is the good side of technology. Let's talk about the bad side. bad side, this subtracts time from each one of us. So to gain that time back later today, well, not for you, you have to wait till tomorrow because it's going to be dark where you are now. For me, I just go to the beach later today because for me, it's noon. For you right now, it's probably six or seven o'clock. That's how you do this. And if you live in a world where nature becomes queer, then that tells you that you live in a dystopian world. I don't think that what I'm saying is on the fringe, I think this is the most common sense answer that you could ever get. And my job isn't to come to your level. I'm gonna bring you to my level. I'm gonna make you understand how powerful nature really is for you. And when we talk about things like Bitcoin, I'm gonna tell you that's actually more like nature too, because when we do work in our life, we create value for the people we love and the people that work for us. Well, all money is, is a way to store that work and that value so that you can use it at a later time. I think everybody knows that. Well, why would you ever want to have money in your life that has a leak in it and constantly leaks out either Freon from the AC so that it gets hot or say the hydraulic jack that runs the front of your airplane? Would you wanna go on that airplane if it keeps leaking oil? No, but guess what? This is what every human to this point has signed up for in their governments. They keep voting for people with soft money. What am I trying to say? You don't have to have the permission of the government anymore Dean, to go and buy Bitcoin. Right now, you can go sign up, exchange, buy it, and you're done. Then the big question is, okay, Jack, let's talk more about how Greece and El Salvador have a lot of things in common. We already did that. Sun and magnetism. Greeks tend to have better water than El Salvador. Why? Because the closer you get to the equator, the water isn't as good. But it turns out it doesn't matter. Why? Because when you understand how light and water work together, the stronger sun is, the less water matters. Turns out the further you get away from the equator, water has to become better because the sun isn't as strong. Because even in Greece, you still face seasons. In El Salvador, there's only two seasons, wet and dry. And the wet season is going on right now in El Salvador. They'll have four or five weeks of rain. Then it becomes summer in October all over again, all the way until next September. That's why the whole country looks like a giant garden. Damn, that's, uh, yeah, that sounds very uh, paradise-like. Well, you got to remember, it is a paradise, but you also have to remember when you go there, especially as a Greek man, just like I went as an American man two weeks ago, you see, you fly into San Salvador, you see a, a major American, European, or American city. But where I went in El Zante, where Bitcoin Beach is, and this is an important part of the story I need to explain to you. 
This is where some of the poor people in El Salvador live. And you get to see what ancient Greece used to be like, where you see lava rocks in mud, people going out, riding bicycles. Life is harder. You know, to get your food, you have to work to do those things. These people don't have a lot of money, but what's happening? Three years ago, people that were in El Zante realized that maybe we can make this paradise. The only people that went to El Zante before was the surfers. Why? Because it's, it's the only country in Central America that's on the Pacific Ocean of the land bridge between North and South America. So the Pacific Ocean has gray waves. So everybody comes to El Salvador to surf. So this is the only part of tourism they really have. So these three guys in Bitcoin Beach decided, why don't we start to use Bitcoin the way Satoshi Nakamoto said in his white paper? Why don't we make it peer to peer just in our community? We don't have to do it in the whole country. Why don't we start to trade Bitcoin for goods and services? So people began to buy water, cerveza fria, you know, trinkets, you know, things like that you would need, band-aids. And next thing you know, the people that were there that didn't have very much when they moved their fiat money into Bitcoin at a very low level, we're talking on like 10 or $20 US, their Bitcoin went from $3,000 a coin to 50. So in other words, now their $20 is worth $10,000. So, so it turned out with no help of the government, no help of anybody else, no help of more tourists coming. Because, you know, during COVID, less tourists came. But guess what? Bitcoin Beach did well. Do you know why? Because Bitcoin went through the roof. See, COVID was manufactured by governments. And if you live a fiat-denominated life, you get dragged down by them. Just remember what I told you earlier. I said to you, governments create emergencies to take powers away from you. What did the people at Bitcoin Beach really find? That when everything in their world went bad, because they made a decision three years ago to try something a little bit different and it reversed the process, all of a sudden you go there and you see smiley faces. No, they don't have Mercedes Benz. They don't have the life that we have like in the United States or Europe. But guess what? They went from abject poverty to now they see their future. The future isn't in the future. It's right now. In other words, they want to continue the path they're on. This story was so powerful that their president got elected two and a half years ago. He became interested in what they were doing and visited. And he examined it. And he started talking to people who knew a lot about Bitcoin. Some of those people in the United States. Those people in the United States convinced him to start the most incredible monetary experiment in human history. Let's make it money, real money in a country. And that's what they did. In fact, uh, just two days ago, he bought 550 Bitcoin to put on the national treasury for the people. What is eventually his goal gonna be? El Salvador has 20 volcanoes, 18 are extinct, two are active. He's going to take the G geothermal steam of the volcano, turn it into electricity to make Bitcoin to put on the balance sheet for his people. He's like, my people own this volcano. If there's some way I can take the power that nature provides for us free, if we use it for trees, we use it to grow things, which is what you functionally do in photosynthesis and farming, why can't we use the excess energy we're not using create Bitcoin to make the, the standard of livings in our country in the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years even better. If you don't think that is something that the people in ancient Greece would have thought was incredible because it's creating value from nature's landscape. And remember what I told you, if you live in a world where somehow nature becomes dystopian, that says more about your place, your environment, then it says about you, your job, if you choose to accept it, is to understand what I'm saying isn't crazy. It's actually based on the rules of nature. And everything about nature is taking chaos and making sense of it. That's what life is. That's what a tree is. And it turns out that's what money should really be. But money's never been created like that because the bankers always got involved to make sure 
they can control it and eventually control you. There's the difference. Amazing. Okay. So I want to be respectful of your time, Jack. So you uh, were very graceful with your time, um, gratitude, and uh, for, for your lessons and for everything you uh, said here. Uh, I'm going to take a closer look personally uh, to Bitcoin and to El Salvador and to other you know countries that may uh, have similar uh, aspects and yes where can people find you uh, and learn more about you your theories your your ideas your teachings well you can go uh, to my website my website is jackbreeze.com on the website there's a free form my form has got 10 years worth of data and talks about different things you can find all my podcasts I've probably done close to a thousand podcasts on YouTube you can search them you can go follow me on Instagram Dr. Jack Cruz on Instagram. You can follow me on Facebook, although I'm actively telling people stay away from Facebook because I think Facebook is anti-Bitcoin. It's anti-freedom. I don't like them, but I have a lot of information also on uh, Facebook. It's Dr. Jack Cruz again. If you want real current events for me, what I'm talking about now, like what I'm talking about being Twitter, Dr. Jack Cruz again. Uh, and then if you decide that you want a little bit more you can become a member of my website. The way you would do that is you have much more one-on-one -on -one time with me. That's cruise at destin.com. You can sign up for different memberships. And if you decide you want Jack Cruz Light, I have a Patreon blog, which has high level discussions about quantum biology. And right now has 32 blogs about Bitcoin on Patreon. And it's patreon.com backslash Dr. Jack Cruz. Basically, if you put Dr. Jack Cruz in a Google box, you'll find stuff about me. All right. Thanks for coming on to the podcast and uh, sharing all these truths, all these ideas, certainly very interesting for me personally. And I hope that the viewers, everybody listening right now, if you liked uh, any of uh, Jack's ideas, uh, please comment down below what you liked more uh, or most, I would say and uh, go to Jack and subscribe uh, to his channel because uh, and especially I, I, I really would propose to go to your website and I, I'll do the same because at the end of the day it's always best to rely on people's websites uh, more than your media than our social media that's my it's my idea I, th I think it's uh, valid any last note uh, one minute uh, note to say to the public Jack no, the, the number one thing that I would tell people is if you have a good idea or if you heard a good idea in this podcast, I did a TED talk about 15 years ago that was so controversial, it got banned, but I made a comment there that I'm going to end this with. Ideation without execution leads to deletion of every good idea. So if you hear a good idea and you don't execute, you don't put an action behind it, you will lose that idea. Anything you heard today, make sure you do your dil due diligence. Make sure you, you don't trust me, you verify what I'm telling you. Once you verify it and you don't execute, shame on you. Action. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll take that lesson. So, goodbye, everybody.